Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. And let's talk about subgroups. So, similarly, even groups can have subgroups. What is the meaning of a subgroup? A subgroup would mean a collection of elements, not all elements, some of the elements within a group that form a group by themselves. And when I say they form a group by themselves, it means that they should satisfy those four properties closure, identity element reciprocity, associativity. All right? Do you see a subgroup here? Now, this is something that you are going to work out G62 and when I say G62, what I definitely mean is that there is G61 as well. Okay? So, this is something that you can work out with not much difficulty. So, I am just giving you the answer. Now, looking at this, can you see some subgroup? E? Oh, you have seen the difficult one first, very good, but is there a subgroup of uh, uh, order 2? EDF is correct, yeah, this is easiest to see perhaps. E A A E, E and E form a group, right, right, and what is the order of that subgroup? 2, actually I should have written G, but I correct it in the slide later on, but it's generally, we write G for the order of subgroup. Okay. So, how many uh, subgroups of order 2 do I have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, E, E, B, E, C, E, D, E, F. Is that right? Right? Of course, in this class, two positives can make a negative. If I ask right twice, then it usually implies that it is not right, it is not right. Look at say uh, E and D and what our friends said is right actually. Look at E and D. If E and D form a subgroup, then I should be able to construct a uh, 2 by 2 multiplication table E D D A E D E D, right. So, if I write E D and E D here, then what do I have in D D? D D is F, right, which is somewhat related to our grading system, D D is almost F, is not it? So, D D is F, that means E and D do not form a group, right. So, this is gone. What about E F? Look at F F. F is D, right? That is also gone. Okay, what about C? Let's let's see. What is CC? CC is E. Oh, so uh, what is CC? No, CC is E. There's no problem with that. Okay, so I can write EC, EC, and that will be a subgroup. No issue with that. What about uh, E B, what is B B? It is E, so no problem. So, I have three subgroups of order 2, right, and as he has seen already, we have a subgroup of order 3 also E D F. Look at the highlighted elements, are you convinced that they form a group? E D F, E D F, what is there? Here you have EDF and then of course, this will also be I should have highlighted this as well. This is EDF and then you have F here and D here and these are E. So, EDF also form a subgroup, right. So, you have a subgroup of order 3, G equal to 3, G equal to small g equal to 3, small g equal to 2, all right. Anything else? E B C D. E B C D would be kind of trivial 
because E B C D can be broken down further into no E B C D will not be you have to include F as well, isn't it? Even if you try to make E B D, you'll find that F will be required because don't forget D D is F, right? If D is there, you cannot do without F. Right? Any other possibility? But can you construct a subgroup like EAC? If I, I if I take EAC, will that be a subgroup or not? Let us check. AA, what is AA? E. What is AC? D. Does not work. There is nothing else actually. We have exhausted all possibilities. Right? There are three subgroups of order 2 and there is one subgroup of order 3. What is the order of the group? 6, I have written G6. So now, now does the Dimakki Bhatti go on? 3, 2, 6. See the correlation. Two and three are both divisors of six, isn't it? Right. Uh, well, EDF is a cyclic group. Don't forget that. But the point is, two and three are divisors of six. Okay. This is a manifestation of a general principle that the order of a subgroup is always a divisor of the order of the group. Right. This has to happen and we will prove it. This has to happen. Order of a subgroup has to be a divisor of the order of the group. So, since this is uh, since the order of the group here is 6, subgroups cannot be anything other than 2 and 3. All right. Can you have a subgroup of order 1? Well, that will be there for everything, right? That is E. The only uh, group of order 1 that can be there is that of E, only one element, okay? fine. So, this is something that we are going to now prove that the order of a subgroup G is a divisor of the order of the group H. Fine. So, let us consider that there are G elements of the subgroup A1, A2, A3, A4, A5, etcetera up to Ag. Okay? And let us consider uh, another element B which is not in the subgroup. All right. Now, if I multiply B with A1, B with A2, B with A3, and so on and so forth, what do I get? I get some element which should be an element of the group, but will it be inside the subgroup? BA1, BA2, BA3. There will be G products, right? Between B and the A's. And I think everybody understands that this BA1, BA2, BA3, etc., cannot be members of the subgroup, cannot be elements of the subgroup. Okay? These are not members of the subgroup, but they are members of the group. Okay? Let us look at that example G62. EDF form a group, right? Take any element other than E, D, and F. Take A. What is D A? D A is B. What is F A? It is C. B and C are outside the subgroup, but there is better B in the group, right? Otherwise, closure will not be satisfied. All right. So, see, it is closer that is uh, telling us that the products cannot be members of group of the subgroup because B is outside the group that is what I am saying. B is outside the subgroup, right. So, if a product of B and an element of the subgroup is within the subgroup, then it means that the subgroup does not satisfy closure. Is that right? 
So, what we have is a contradiction. If we say we start uh, with the uh, uh, premise that B is outside the subgroup and then we say that B A 1 or maybe B A 5 is within the subgroup, then we are saying that closure is not satisfied for the subgroup. So, the subgroup is not a group then what are we talking about right. This is one part of the story. The other part of the story is that after all B and A 5 are both members of the group. So, B A 5 has to be an element of the group as well okay. So, that is what we are saying is clear. Now, see what has happened. So, just for B how many elements have you generated? How many elements are there in the group? In the sorry in the subgroup g number of elements are there in the subgroup for b how many elements that you have you generated g more. So, what is the total number 2 g right. So, for each element outside you are going to generate g number of elements ok. So, finally, you have to stop somewhere or the other if it is a finite group. So, what what you have what you would have uh, had then is that something like n g or k g and that would be the order right. So, the order of the group has to be something like k g where k is an integer understood because every element will behave like b and every element outside the subgroup is going to generate g number of elements by multiplication. So, total number has to be k g where k is an integer. So, h so g has to be a divisor of h all right. So, nice mathematical riddle does it have anything to do with chemistry no yes do not forget what we have discussed al al already to start from octahedron we said that C 3 V is a subgroup of octahedron because you get C 3 V by substituting how many elements two elements like this. Actually, that is not right, isn't it? Three elements, three elements. I have to correct that. Somehow it has gone unnoticed. But what about this? This side. This is D4H. This is C4V. This is C2V. Right? By different substitutions. Now look at the orders. Forget everything else. Look at the orders. This is H, and these are all Gs, isn't it? Not really H. I should write Gs. Okay. This is 48. On this side, order is six. Is six a divisor of 48? Yes. What about 16? Yes. 8, well, if 16 is a divisor, then 8 and 4 have to be divisors. Okay. So, this is a manifestation of a chemical manifestation of the fact that the order of uh, let me put it the other way. Now, I have been saying the same thing again and again. Let me just turn it around and say that the order of the group is going to be an integral multiple of the order of any subgroup, right. And this what we have here is a nice chemical manifestation of this mathematical principle okay. And another uh, instance that should convince us that these two discussions are not divorced from each other fine All right. So, I think I will end here today it is almost 6 30 I will end with this concept of similarity transformation. Similarity transformation is like this where A, B, X are all members of the group what uh, uh, yeah yeah I noticed it X inverse A X this inverse should not be there. So, once again peril of copy paste mm -hmm. fine X inverse A X that is called similarity transformation where A, B, X are the elements of the group. So, A and B are called similarity transforms of each other they are also called conjugates of each other. So, a class is defined as a complete sets of elements that are the correct spelling would be conjugate to each other. So, if I have a complete set of elements within a group that are conjugates to each other, then they comprise a class. What is the meaning of a complete set? What is complete set? 
what is the complete set that you studied in maybe quantum uh, CH4 to 5 or some such course? Let us close with this question, actually, actually you know the answer, so you should think. Let us close with this question and come back on Friday. The answer is so easy that if I tell you what the answer is, you are going to throw up your hands in the air. So you figure it out. The answer has actually been discussed in today's class also. Anyway, so we come back on Friday then and start from here. We start with this slide, similarity transformation, talk a little bit about classes and properties of similarity transformation and then we can move over to matrices. After all, we started this discussion with transformation matrices and then we will go ahead and see how we can reach the great orthogonality theorem. Okay.